I am Jose Ochoa. This is my friend. My name is Julius Robinson. Uh, we met at Leroy Green uh, last school year. He just graduated from college. Uh, he's going to Sac State now. Yes. Yes. And so um, I felt like it would be kind of cool to do like something different today. And I'm call I'm calling it Ask a Young Person. As you know, well, some of you know I've been working with youth uh, half of my life. Uh, in 1997, I, I surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus, and I became a youth leader at my local church called Horizon Christian Fellowship in West Sacramento. And so I ser started serving youth, for, you probably don't even know this, for 10 years. I was working as a youth leader, wow. and I guess I did such a good job, I was asked to be the youth pastor. And I've been working with youth ever since, uh, and so I love working with young people, but I'm no longer young. And and I, every generation is different. Don't you agree? Yes, sir. And so just because I knew one generation doesn't mean I know the next generation. Right. And so I want to ask you these questions to get to know you. Mm -hmm. And you could be, in a sense, speaking for, for people your age. Yes. And so here, here, um, I'm, here's the first question I have for you. Uh -huh. uh, I know we asked the Dutch lady at Dutch Brothers. <laughs> The same question. Yeah. I'm wondering if you're going to answer, answer it the same way. Uh -huh. uh, what is your favorite app? Whew. Uh, my favorite app is not TikTok. <laughs> I'm not a, I don't really like TikTok. I think it's, it's interesting. I think, um, you know, people who post like biblical stuff on TikTok, it's pretty cool. But I don't, I don't know. I, I wasn't able to get into it. Um, but I think my favorite app would have to be either Instagram or YouTube. One of those, I think. I'll be on YouTube a lot. <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah. I'm older than you, but I think I like YouTube a lot too. Yeah, YouTube's pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what kind of music do you like? Oh. Uh, I like. Oh man, I like Christian rap. I like Christian rap a lot. I think um, Christian rap is very slept on in the culture and stuff like that and even in Christian circles sometimes it can be looked down upon because it's not like your traditional contemporary worship songs but I think that um, Christian rap definitely is able to bless different people who may not like the contemporary worship songs so it's able to be a tool so that people can come to Christ and people can relate so I, I really like Christian rap I do like contemporary worship songs but I think ah, I don't know sometimes the Lord has to work on me with that but yeah what what rap artists do you like? Uh, I listen to like some people might know, like Brian Trejo, um, this guy named Caleb Gordon. Um, who else? There's this new. I, I be discovering people. Like his name. One one other guy's name is Secret, and another guy's name is like Main Two Wavy. Like they're like younger Christian rappers. So yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Sure. I like Lecrae, KB. Yep, yep. Uh, so uh, we got some stuff in common. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> uh, next question that I have for you is, best movie you, you've seen this summer, or Ooh. or the, the best movie you've seen recent? Recently, the best movie... <sighs> I feel like the best movie I've seen this year has been the new Batman movie. That mm. movie was excellent art. Like a... Like, it was just art at its finest. It was just so artistic from the, the frames to the story. The new Batman, the best Batman. Uh -oh. Better than Christian Bale. All the people out there who think Christian Bale is the best Batman, no. No. So, I, I think the Batman was a, it was a, it was an awesome film. Oh, okay. I gotta yeah. see it. Great. Uh, what do you love best about being young? Mm. Uh... I think what I love best about being a young person in this day and age. Is and how young, how old are you? How? So I'm 18. I'm 18. I was born in 2003. Uh, I think one thing I love about being young is that I'm able to do a lot for the Lord, even though I'm in college and I feel like college is kind of going to be taking a lot of my time. I'm able to be very um, available to the Lord. And I think I'm able to be an example for young people and be able to reach them because a young person may not receive something from maybe like an older pastor. They may have stigma uh, towards that pastor. But me as a young person who talks like a young person, dresses like a young person, I'm able to reach them for the gospel. So I think that's one of the main reasons that I really like being young. Nice. Yeah. 
Uh, what's the hardest thing about being young? Oh, <laughs> man, we're going to need like 20 more minutes <laughs> to go on that topic, man, in this day and age. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the hardest things about being young is maybe, um, maybe two. You know, as a young man, girls, I think that can sometimes be um, hard, you know, because me, I'm waiting for the Lord celibate, no sex until marriage or so. That can be very difficult for me at times. And another thing can be um, conforming to the culture. I think the culture is constantly pitching the young people that you should be like this. You know, in order to be cool, you have to be like this and this. And I think sometimes um, it can be difficult. But, you know, God always helps with uh, making sure that you're you're on track. So I think that's one of the two things that's kind of hard about being Hmm. young. And what is the big, I know it's kind of similar, but what is the biggest temptation young people face? So you're speaking for yourself, and from, you know, what you see Mm -hmm. uh, among your peers, Mm -hmm. what's the biggest temptation young people face? Young Christian people or just young people in general? I'd say Christian and non-Christian, you know, temptation, like to, you know, like any type of temptation, something that's going to hurt you in the long run. Mm -hmm. It might be satisfying. Mm-hmm. Might feel good right now, right. but in the end, you're only hurting yourself. Right, right. So, what's the biggest temp- temptation? Mm-hmm. Negative temptation. Yeah. Or all temptations negative, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what what's the biggest temptation you're facing, or, or young people mm-hmm. face? So, I'll, I'll describe it in Christian young people and non-Christian young people. Mm-hmm. So, I think. I'll, I'll do the non-Christian first. So non-Christian young people, I think one of the biggest temptations that they may face is comparing themselves to people in the culture. Hmm. Um, I think that culture nowadays is it's so toxic. It's so filled with lies and and false realities of what life is supposed to look like. Oh, you got to look like this. Oh, you got to dress like this. Oh, you got to sound like this. Or you hmm. have to get the girls. You have to be cool. You have to have that money, that car. I think young people, I think, it, and I think it's a reason why so many young people are depressed, suicidal, all these things, because they're comparing themselves to something that isn't true. Mm. And culture, what is what is fed to them is it's not reality. You know what I mean? It's not what God has in store. So they're comparing themselves. They have to have the new shoes, the mm. newest game shoes, and they have to all these things, and they have to be something that they force themselves to be something that they don't have to be. Mm. You know what I mean? And that damages them because some people don't have it. You know, some people financially aren't as um, grounded and things like that. So I think yeah. with with people who aren't um, of the faith, young people, I think they struggle a lot with the culture and learning how to be themselves and really seeking love in all the wrong places, mm. like seeking sex and drugs and all these various things. They don't have Christ to fulfill them. You know what I mean? And so for Christian young people, I think Christian young people, I think what they struggle with the most is, um, you know, it could be lust. You can narrow it down to lust. You can narrow it down to trying to be like people in the culture, looking at people who are in the world saying, well, they have so many freedoms. They can do this. They can have sex when they want to. They can go drink. They can go do all these things. I think Christian people struggle with that a lot, and they have to understand that um, this world is temporary, and being with Christ, being walking with Christ is always the greater way in that. Man, all the mm. stuff in the world is it, it's vain, you know. Solomon described that stuff as vanity of vanities, mm. and so um, I think Christian young people struggle with like comparing themselves with with the culture and wanting to be like the culture, mm. feeling like they're they're like enclosed, like God is kind of like quote unquote not letting them have fun. When in reality, God wants to protect these young people because um, when young people serve the Lord in their in their young age, they're blessed, mm. right? Because the enemy wants to take young people's um, their, 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 their youth, so that, you know, the scripture says, train up a child in the way that they should go, so when they're old, they won't depart from it. The enemy wants to take that time away from them, so that when they get older, it's harder for them to get to the right path. So, um, I think they struggle with that a lot, so. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Here's the next question. How did you come to know the Lord? Uh, how did you come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior? That's the question I have for you. Yeah. I know we were talking about that earlier, that yeah. you want to share your testimony. Yeah. So here's your opportunity. How do you come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Uh-huh. Give me your five-minute yep. testimony. Yep, five-minute testimony. Boom. So uh, I grew up without a father in my life. My father, um, he got put 
put in prison for something that he didn't do. So my mom had to take care of me, you know, just me and her, you know, she always provided for me. You know, I didn't grow up around the best crowd in the best neighborhood, so I was um, kind of exposed to all the wrong things. Um, and one summer, I was, uh, I was uh, with my cousin, and I had a traumatic experience where I almost lost my life. Mm. And out of that brimmed, like, suicidal thoughts and depression and anxiety and all these various things, Um, Because something so traumatic happened to me, and if we have more time, I can go into more detail, but something very bad happened to me, and I tried to take my own life, and Jesus himself grabs me as I'm about to do this thing, and he saves my life in that moment. And from then, I was struggling for a whole summer, just struggling emotionally, mentally, and one day I go to a church, and the presence of God was so unlike anything I've ever experienced in my entire life, and Jesus was like, you know, I'm here, I love you, I've been waiting for you. And so in that moment, he encapsulates me in his love. And from that day forward, I began to go on this journey with Christ and learning and growing and understanding my purpose. And I would never go back for the world. Like, I don't care. Like, all the stuff in the world, whatever you want to give, like, it's nothing compared to knowing Christ. And so that's kind of my condensed testimony. Um, Yeah, God, it's so many other stuff. But in a nutshell, man, I I was down bad. I was wandering off the road, and he found me. Have you made a YouTube video sharing your extension, your, your full version of how you came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Uh, on my channel, I haven't, but uh, that is in the works. It's I'm going to definitely drop in one more detail. Let me encourage you. Uh, I always tell people, um, those of you that know the Lord, you got to have a one-minute testimony, a five-minute testimony, and a 30-minute testimony. Right, yeah. Go more than 30 minutes, you're going to lose people. But... W- w- Everybody has a story. Yeah. That's what a testimony is, a story oh. how you came to know Jesus as yeah. Lord and Savior. We don't just wake up one morning, like, I need God in my yeah. life. Nope. Sometimes that happens to some people, but right. it's rare. It's a story. It's a, it's a process, yeah. how we come to know Jesus as Lord yeah. and personal Savior. So I want to encourage you, next YouTube video or the next few months, share the 30-minute version. Yeah. I'll love to hear it. Yeah, it's already in the works. It's already in the works. Uh Next question I have is, how do you know God is real? Ooh, oh my goodness. How do I know that God is real without a doubt? Is it me personally or me like on a, like a, like um, scientifically or like I say both. Like, how do you know God's real personally and how do you know he's God intellectually? Okay. Uh, how do I know God is real personally? Um, one thing that, oh my goodness, that. It's so important, and, and we have to really, believers, do a better job of really thanking the Lord for sending the Spirit of God mm. to the earth for us to live inside of us. I think we have to do more in thanking the Lord for that because when the Lord says that the Holy Spirit will live inside of you, He's not lying when He says mm. that. He means it. And so when you accept Christ, He gives you His Spirit, and His Spirit will be your teacher. You know, He will be the comforter. And so... How I know me personally, even if there's seasons, because I'm promise you, when the Bible talks about there being seasons for to die, seasons to live, seasons to, to be happy and be sad, it's true. Because in, even in seasons when the, the Lord is just so supernaturally touching my life, or even when it feels like he's not saying nothing at all, mm. one thing that always keeps me grounded in understanding that, well, God is still here, is his spirit inside of me telling me, do that. Don't do that. You yeah. should read your Bible right now. Yeah. You should get on your knees right now. Yeah. I think having the Holy Spirit, it always shows me because we have to understand that us as human beings, we don't want to do what God wants us to do. Mm-hmm. We want to be disobedient. We want to be sinful. We want to mm-hmm. live in that way. Yeah. But when the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, he shows you the way and he changes your heart's desires. Mm-hmm. So me personally, I always know that God is with me because the Holy Spirit shows the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so on a scientific more... Like, if you don't have that personal, like, knowing, I think you know that God is real because if we just look at the world, look at the universe, look at the cosmos, you just, it's so beautiful. It's so, you know, it's just so grand. And, um, you know, evolution says that, you know, well, it was a big bang. It was this condensed thing that just spread it out, this matter, this explosion type thing. But I don't believe that something so beautiful from the mountains to the seas to the animals to DNA to all these various things that are so particular, so 
masterfully created that something so accidental could have created something like that. And if that's the case, well, where did that come from? You know what I mean? The Bible talks about in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So I think that the universe and just all these things, it couldn't have come to such and to such order as it has. It's 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 too I feel like it's too great. You know, it's too in a way perfect. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so I really think that it was it was like on purpose, you know? So I think that's one way you can look at it. Um and one way you can really see like the way, you know, we are able to have we we're able to create, we're able to you see the animals, to all the different species, to how DNA is so crazy, to even your eye, the way your eye is, you know what I mean? And so I, I think that things like that are something that we definitely have to understand and really think about, you know? So that's my point. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember one time Jay Z was being interviewed and and uh, they asked him a question about God and mm -hmm. and he says, I know there's a God just because when I get hot and I'm, when I'm rapping, sweat starts to come off my eyebrow yeah. and that's not no accident. Yeah. And he's like, there has to be something greater out there, yeah, such yeah. as a God to, to make the sweat gland, yeah. to sweat, sweat at the proper moment. And yeah. I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> he is breaking it down <laughs> in, right. in his own language. Yeah, I'm sweating right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question, we're almost done. Yeah. Uh, what is your biggest fear? Ooh, I actually like that question sometimes. I've answered this question my biggest fear isn't death. Uh, it's not like persecution or, you know, the Lord says, don't fear a man who can hurt your body. Fear God who can, you know, cast the body into hell and destroy the earthly body. Um, I think my biggest fear is me. Um, mm. I think the reason why I say that is because, yes, the devil, believers, I think sometimes we give the devil too much credit. We're mm. like, oh, the devil did that, the devil. I think it's true. The enemy, we do fight a fight that isn't flesh and blood, meaning we fight against things that aren't seen. Mm. Um, but I think the alter, the um, the um, the ultimate like deciding factor, whether you're going to serve God or not, is yourself. Mm. It isn't the devil because the, the devil isn't a physical individual. He's not. The devil can't walk up and slap you. You know mm. what I mean? But yourself, you could you could prevent yourself from following the will of God. You could prevent yourself. From doing your purpose meaning kind of the same thing I just said and so the reason why I feel like myself and I think the main reason why the Lord pressed on it in his word that this flesh has to die mm. is because if the flesh doesn't die it can prevent you from being exactly who God has called mm. you to be and that is that is that terrifies me so much you know knowing that my biggest enemy isn't the devil it isn't the world it's myself mm. and so that's why the Lord doesn't say that the world has to die or the other or the, or the, or things like that. It says this body has to die, mm. you know? So I think, um, and that's a um, figurative way. Yeah. Um, I think my biggest fear is myself because I feel like God has called me to some really great things. But I think those things can be prevented if I'm not obedient, if I'm not following the will of God, and if I'm not understanding and, and being obedient to all those things. So I think my biggest fear is me. Mm. What's your biggest fear? Why don't you type down uh, in the comment section your biggest fear? Let's let's try to get to know each other. Yeah, yeah. Because we all have fears if we want to be r real. Right. Someone says I'm fearless. I yeah. You have everybody has a fear whether they mention it mention it or not. We right. we all have these fears and mm -hmm. but we can't allow our fears to stop us yeah. from doing what God's called us to do. Um, last question, Jesus, the Lord Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations, yes. baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. And then he goes on to say, teaching them to yes. obey all that I have commanded, and lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Yes. So the question I have for you, is it possible to reach young people today for Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Is it possible to reach people for Jesus in our age, yeah, our day, mm -hmm. if so, how? Whew. I might take a little minute on Go that. Go for it. <laughs> um, is it possible with the culture, 
that has absorbed the young people of this day, you know, with all these various factors from you know, pornography to all these different things that really have the young people scared, do I think it's possible? Of course it's possible, because with God, all things are possible. Um, I think that the church doesn't do a good job at times of reaching young people, um, because as you know, in the 21st century, young people aren't just running to church. Um, at least most young people are, because the culture, the enemy, to say it a lot of my church, the enemy's been working overtime with the young people, with getting them to all these various flashy things. Um, I think the church has to do a better job of um, never compromising what the church is supposed to be, because you never want to fix and fashion the gospel to a way where people can perceive it. Not saying that you can't um, be relatable or nothing like that, but when you begin to compromise what God has put in place as the church, I think you fall short. And I think that's why you see a lot of churches that have a lot of seeker-sensitive stuff, but the gospel is absent. Mm. Um, but I do think the church has to... Um, that what's so crazy that you're asking that is because I was actually thinking about this very question before we did this interview. Um, there was an, ev like an event at my church that, that we did where it was a bunch of PlayStations and a bunch of games and a bunch of you know young people stuff. And at the end, they were able to preach the gospel to these young people, young people that I had never seen go to church. But they went to church because all these various things were there. You know what I mean? And so I think um, it's important that um, people um, are able to use the right things to draw the young people. You know what I mean? Whether that be events or just canvassing or whatever needs to be done as the Lord instructs mm. how to reach young people. Because we need to reach the young people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're the next generation yeah. of lawyers and doctors and politicians yeah. and all these different things who are going to be in the world. So if we can have young people who are godly, um, I think that can go a long way. Mm. You know, because a lot of young people are perishing. Mm. They're perishing, and they're leaving this world without Christ. And we know what happens to people that happens to. Um, I think that we have to um, really, really be in tune with the Lord and ask him, Lord, what do you want us to do with our young people? Lord, how do we draw young people? You know what I mean? And so I think it is possible, but we just have to um, ask God to help us. We have to um, make sh making sure that we're spiritually aligned with God's will so that we can be an example to young people. Um, and I think that um, we just have to be mindful of what the Lord is commanding and just, man, just walk after Christ and then he'll lead. You know, so I think that it is possible. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh we actually are having a big event this Sunday at our church. Uh, yes. We're going to do something fun for the young people. We're having a, a bounce house for the, the little kids, mm -hmm. and we're having a dunk tank. Yep. And so my, my son, Josiah, uh, he's into baseball. So he, mm -hmm. he's bringing all his baseball friends to church this Sunday yeah. so they could uh, you know throw balls at, at, at that little yep. uh, target and yep. dunk their friends, get, dunk a pastor, uh, dunk a parent. So you're welcome to come to church this Sunday. Yes, uh, we're going to be sharing the gospel. Uh, Don and Krista Proctor will be at church this Sunday as, as our guest speakers. Uh, if you have any other questions you'd like to ask a young person, you'd like to ask Julius some questions that I didn't cover, uh, please type in your questions in the comment section, and I'll make sure you get the questions yeah. and you can answer the questions. Yeah. Uh, next time we do this, we're going to do something different. We're going to call call it Ask a Pastor. So we're going to mm -hmm. switch seats, per se, and he's going to ask me like 10 questions of uh, what, what it's like to be a pastor. Or, mm -hmm. And you could go with heavy questions and light <laughs> questions, whatever questions you want. Right. Bring it on next time, all right? Yes, sir. And so uh, thank you for joining. Um, we'll catch you next time. God bless you. Have a good day. Bless. Bye.